The Texas Archaeological Research Laboratory, known as TARL, is a division of the University of Texas at Austin and is tasked with the curation and protection of archaeological artifacts held in trust for the people of the state of Texas, as well as other entities. This presentation will introduce you to the history and mission of TARL, as well as some of Texas's most notable artifacts and archaeological resources. The story of Tarl begins with James Edwin Pierce. J.E. Pierce began his career in Texas receiving a bachelor's and master's degree from UT. For 23 years, he was the principal of Austin High School and in his spare time studying anthropology at the University of Chicago and in Paris. In 1917, he became chairman of the Department of Institutional History at UT, which he renamed the Department of Anthropology. In 1918, Pierce began the first survey of Texas archaeology, sending out 10,000 questionnaires to school teachers across the state, asking them if they or their students knew of any Indian mounds in their area. He started his archaeological excavations with a grant of $58.10. Pierce displayed many of his finds in Old Main at the university. The building housed many departments and had been built in sections in the late 1800s and was finally torn down in 1932 to make room for today's UT Tower. Pierce was a strong advocate of public education regarding archaeology and throughout his life pushed for a better venue displaying the past cultures of Texas. Texas archaeology thrived from 1936 to 1941 under the Works Progress Administration, an ambitious employment and infrastructure project designed to get the nation back on its feet in the Great Depression. UT archeologists oversaw large projects throughout the state. And as the Lower Colorado River Authority built the dams that form today's Highland Lakes, they surveyed the areas that would be inundated. Some of this work is still being cataloged today. The State Museum that J.E. Pierce had fought for so hard finally opened in 1939, but unfortunately he passed away just months before seeing it first open. The Texas Memorial Museum was funded by the U.S. Congress, the Texas Legislature, and a donation drive by students. The American Legion sold Texas Centennial Half Dollars at a premium to raise money for the TMM, and President Franklin Roosevelt set off a dynamite charge to mark the groundbreaking. Originally the State Natural History Museum, it was transferred to the University of Texas in 1959. At the close of World War II, UT acquired a lease on 402 acres and 29 buildings northwest of Austin. The compound had been built as a magnesium plant supplying the war effort and had been closed down in 1944. UT moved much of its military research out to what was now known as the Off-Campus Research Center. The 1944 Flood Control Act initiated one of the largest civil works programs in American history. Dams and the infrastructure to support them were built throughout the U.S. There was both a concern that precious history and prehistory would be destroyed by these projects, and a continued need to find jobs for the unemployed. The Interagency Archaeological Salvage Project, consisting of the Bureau of Reclamation, the Corps of Engineers, the Smithsonian Institute, and the National Park Service, requested that the Smithsonian assess sites that might be destroyed and determine the most important to preserve. Thus was born the River Basin Survey that the Smithsonian ran from 1945 to 1969. They established four regional offices, one of which was in Austin. To tackle some of this work, the Texas Archaeological Salvage Project at UT was formed. In 1953, the War Assets Administration, with significant prodding from Senator Lyndon Johnson, made the decision to sign the former magnesium plant over to the University of Texas permanently to be used as a research facility. 
Negotiations for a purchase began in 1949, and the university did not receive a clear title to the property until 1971. Named the Balcones Research Center, the first laboratories at the site continued the military contracts that UT had acquired during World War II. The radiobiology lab at UT was the birthplace and home of Sam, a rhesus monkey pictured in the upper right, who made one of the first Project Mercury flights to space in the Little Joe II test in 1959. Sam returned to Earth successfully and eventually retired to the San Antonio Zoo. Many credit the opening of the Balcones Research Center as the catalyst that eventually made Austin a center for the tech industry. The archaeological projects that UT had conducted since J.E. Pierce's day resulted in thousands of artifacts, reams of paperwork, and boxes of photos and slides that were gradually filling many spaces on campus. In 1960, the Texas Memorial Museum, the Texas Archaeological Salvage Project, and the Department of Anthropology founded the Texas Archaeological Research Center as a cooperative venture, a place that all of the information and research they had stored could be consolidated. Between 1962 and 1964, these already formidable collections were transferred to Building 5 at the Balcones Research Center, seen here in the lower left. Building 5 was one of the original buildings left over from the magnesium manufacturing plant. In 1963, Deanne Story was named the first executive director of the renamed Texas Archaeological Research Laboratory. Born and raised in Texas, Deanne had gone on to become one of the first women to receive a PhD in anthropology from UCLA. She became the first professional woman archaeologist in Texas when she was hired as the assistant director of the Texas Archaeological Salvage Project in 1962. In 1965, she was also hired as a full professor at UT. Dr. Story was the director of TARL until 1987. TARL's mission encompasses four goals. The first is to collect, curate, and preserve the material record of Texas's past, including artifacts, notes, journals, data, maps, slides, photos, and other materials to help us understand the past. The second is to participate in the educational mission of the University of Texas, to train students in archeological methods and theories. The third goal is to conduct archeological research, today performed primarily by divisions of TARL, like the Mesoamerican Research Center and the Prehistory Research Project. The final goal is to disseminate knowledge of archeology span to both fellow archeologists and the general public through publication, presentations, educational outreach, and other programs. TARL today houses a wide variety of archeology-related span collections, covering over 70 years of Texas history, many of them held in trust for the people of Texas and other entities. There are more than 50 million artifacts from more than 8,000 sites, including 3,300 ceramic vessels, and hundreds of thousands of ceramic sherds. There are more than 120,000 negatives and slides. And because TARL is the official depository for state archaeological information, files on more than 55,000 archaeological sites in Texas. The records room includes maps, field notes, and unpublished manuscripts and correspondence. Among these items are many notable finds and bits of Texas history and prehistory. Ceremonial Cave in the Waco Mountains was evidently a shrine where people deposited items for over 2,000 years. Researchers looked at this site in the 1920s and 30s, prompted by a local couple who were worried about the cave being looted. They found sandals, beads, projectile points, bone and wood tools, clothing, and baskets. They also found a unique armband or bracelet fashioned from yucca fiber basketry with pieces of polished turquoise embedded in resin on it. 
this was left at the cave by ancestral Puebloan peoples around 1,000 years ago. In another cave near Comstock, Texas, archaeologists found a twined fiber bag still lay shut beneath three fiber mats and laying on a rabbit fur blanket, as seen in the lower left. Carefully opened in the lab, it contained more than 200 items, including toxic buckeye and mountain laurel seeds, bone and stone tools, rope, bifaces, an incised stone or hammer stone, a small turtle carapace, and 11 jackrabbit mandibles. Since its recovery, this bag has proven to be an intriguing mystery. Was it a shaman's pouch or a hunter's bag? Did they mean to leave it here, or did they never return to pick it up? Or was it deliberately left at the cave as an offering? Some archaeologists point out the tools and equipment needed to sharpen and half tools, and believe this may have belonged to a hunter. Others think that the way it was deposited indicated it was a medicine bundle or offering. Andrew Elliott, A.E. Anderson, was a civil engineer who established a business in Brownsville, Texas in 1908. His surveying business thrived, as did his growing interest in the archaeology of the Rio Grande Delta. His business did well because the area was changing rapidly with new agricultural developments and urban construction. Anderson surveyed and collected from more than 200 sites, many of which have since been destroyed and built a collection that includes bone and stone tools, ground stone artifacts, and ceramics. His collection is best known for the thousands of shell ornaments and tools he collected. The ceramics in his collection have shown there was long distance trade between the peoples of the Delta and the Huastec, a Maya people living around Veracruz, Mexico. There are thousands of stone tools in the Taro collections, ranging from some of the oldest tools currently known from the Galt site in Texas to points from the type site for the Clovis culture, Black Rotter Draw in New Mexico. Tarl even curates some of the oldest stone tools known, Oldowan and Achillean tools from Africa. Archaeologists are not just interested in prehistory. One intriguing site is in southern Travis County, and was investigated from 2007 through 2009 as part of the impact surveys for State Highway 45. It was originally the farm of Ransom Williams, a freedman born a slave who purchased 45 acres in 1871. Judging from the material artifacts found, Rance and Sarah Williams were successful farmers. Some artifacts can really help archeologists identify individuals. And that was the case with this branding iron in the shape of the letter R. Archival research found that Ransom Williams registered a horse brand, RA, in Travis County in 1872, and this brand matches the R. Archaeological work encompasses excavation, analysis, archival research, and in the case of this project, oral histories as project members found and interviewed descendants of Ransom and Sarah Williams. As previously mentioned, the Taro collections contain more than 3,300 ceramic vessels and hundreds of thousands of ceramic sherds. Many of these are from burials, for instance, the large number of Caduan ceramics held in trust for the Caduan nation. And these are not shown in public out of respect. But the Taro collection also contains modern ceramics, like these vessels from San Ildefonso Pueblo in New Mexico. These vessels were made by Maria and Julian Martinez, famed Native American potters who discovered how to make this polished black on black ceramics. One of the pots now at Tarl is recorded as the third black on black vessel made by Maria Martinez. Tarl is a record repository, and not all the records stored are field notes. In 1933, Forrest Kirkland's father told him about some nearby Indian paintings he'd seen on a bluff and suggested he take a look, and a labor of love was launched, a study of the rock art of Texas Native Americans. Forrest ran a commercial art studio in Dallas, and over the next 10 years, Forrest and his wife Lula 
would measure, scale, sketch, and ultimately record in watercolors over 80 sites in Texas. Since then, many sites have been lost under reservoir waters and to looting and vandalism, so the Kirkland's watercolors are a priceless record of this early Texas art. Records curated here include the history of archaeology in Texas. This typewriter is said to have belonged to early Texas archaeologist Alvin T. Jackson. A.T. Jackson was born in Baghdad, Texas, near modern Leander, and had served in the Army during World War I before returning to Texas and working as a freelance newspaper writer. J.E. Pierce hired him in 1929 to head up his statewide survey, and he worked for the university for 13 years until Pierce's death and UT began requiring college degrees for its instructors. Jackson kept meticulous notes of each site he surveyed or excavated in small ledger books, one for each year. Pictured here are pages from his 1932 ledger. For almost 70 years, Tarl has been curating and preserving Texas history and prehistory. They also protect artifacts and ethnographic collections from around the world. These priceless collections are made available to museums, researchers, and students, so we may continue both learning from and admiring these artifacts. The records and images maintained by the Tarl staff tell the prehistory and history of Texas, as well as the history of archaeology in our state. The laboratory maintains the state's archaeological registration system, which helps archaeologists know of past work done in an area and gives them background on what they might come across in new excavations. Archaeology is a true apprenticeship discipline, and students use these collections for research and to learn about archaeological analysis. Interns at Tarl work on large projects, sometimes resulting in master's theses and doctoral dissertations and get on the job training required for the next generation of archaeologists. Researchers from around the world come to look at materials here for comparative purposes or to test new hypotheses about human behavior in the past. The resulting reports, theses, and dissertations are only one way Tarl has of reaching out to both professional audiences and the general public. Speakers, tours, and outreach opportunities are pursued to help people understand what archaeology is, why we study the past, and how an understanding of the past can shape our future. More information on the Texas Archaeological Research Laboratory can be found on their website, sites.utexas.edu slash tarl. You can also help support Tarl's mission by joining the Friends of Tarl or making a donation at liberalarts.utexas.edu slash tarl slash join the friends of tarl.php.